Well, good evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well. And this is your Royal Daily News for October 15th, 2022. In Madrid, His Majesty King Felipe VI of Spain hosted a luncheon meeting for His Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco at Palacio de la Zarzuela. Prior to the luncheon with His Majesty the King, the Sovereign Prince visited the Higher Council for Scientific Research. Whilst there, the Sovereign Prince learned about Spanish oceanography in the times of Prince Albert I, as well as attended a screening of a documentary about the founder of the Spanish Institute of Oceanography and scientist Mr. Odin de Buen y del Cos. Tomorrow, Prince Albert II, accompanied by the President of Cantabria, Mr. Miguel Ángel Revilla, will visit the Puente Viesco Cave Art Center and the Monte Castillo Caves. Nearly a century ago, Prince Albert I, who is a great-great-grandfather of Prince Albert II, financed the studies of the rock caves of Puente Viesco. This will be the Sovereign Prince's second official trip to Cantambria. His last visit was in 2010. Yesterday afternoon, in Lisbon, His Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco, accompanied by the President of Portugal, Mr. Marcelo de Souza, attended the inauguration of the exhibition entitled The Oceanographer Friend, Prince Albert I of Monaco and Portugal, 1875 through 1920, held at the Navy Museum. The exhibition tells the story of the friendship between Prince Albert I and King Dom Carlos of Portugal, who was also an oceanographer. The exhibition also showcases the voyages and expeditions undertaken by Prince Albert I in Portugal, the oceanographer friend, Prince Albert I of Monaco and Portugal, 1875-1920, through 1920, was organized in collaboration with the Navy Museum in Lisbon, with contributions from the Palais Princière de Monaco Archives, the Musée Oceanographique de Monaco, and the Prince Albert I Committee. When speaking to the press about his great-great-grandfather, the sovereign prince said that he was an extraordinary visionary who advanced the cause of oceanography. The Sovereign Prince went on to say that although Prince Albert I was not a trained scientist, he helped the promotion of science, especially oceanography, because he was, quote, so mentally curious and genuinely passionate about the sea, end quote. The Sovereign Prince also noted that the late Prince Albert I's work can, quote, help society to understand what we can do now to combat the different problems in our oceans, overfishing, pollution, and maritime acidification, which are consequences of climate change." End quote. The exhibition, The Oceanographer Friend, Prince Albert I of Monaco and Portugal, 1875-1920, through 1920, will be open to the public until December 18, 2022, at the Navy Museum in Lisbon. In the evening, Prince Albert II arrived at Palazzo de Belém to attend a ceremony and dinner held in his honor and hosted by the President of Portugal, Mr. Marcelo de Souza. Prior to the dinner, President de Souza presented the Grand Necklace of the Order of Infante Dom Enrique to the Sovereign Prince. The Order of Infante Dom Enrique is intended to distinguish those who have provided relevant services to Portugal in the country and abroad as well as services in the expansion of Portuguese culture or for knowledge of Portugal, its history, and its values. The Order of Ampante Dom Enrique is the highest degree of the order and is awarded by the President of the Republic to foreign heads of state. The Grand Necklace can also be granted by the President to former heads of state and to people whose achievements of an extraordinary nature and special relevance to Portugal make them deserving of this distinction. In Monte Carlo, Her Royal Highness Princess Caroline of Hanover, Princess of Monaco, attended the 53rd edition of the Monaco International Bouquet Competition. The two-day competition, held under the theme La Couleur Dans la Mode, will honor the fashion houses of Chanel, Saint Laurent, Lacroix, Louboutin, and Gautier, with magnificent flower arrangements, which will be evaluated before being presented to the public. 
Established in 1968 by the late Princess Grace of Monaco, the Monaco International Bouquet Competition is organized by the Garden Club of Monaco, which today, Her Royal Highness Princess Caroline of Hanover is president. Later in the afternoon, the princess, accompanied by her daughter, Mrs. Charlotte Kazaragi Rassam, attended the opening of the exhibition entitled Monaco on Stage, 100 Years of Concerts. On Friday in Northfield, Minnesota, Her Majesty Queen Sonia of Norway visited St. Olaf's College. During her visit, Her Majesty the Queen officially opened the Special Collections Vault at the Rull Vogue Memorial Library. According to the Norwegian Royal Court, the new archive is a collaboration with the Norwegian American Historical Association, which was founded in 1925 to mark the centenary of the wave of migration of Norwegians to the United States. The collection contains letters, diaries, photographs, and other material that is an invaluable source of information about Norwegian immigration. Thereafter, the president of St. Olaf College gave Her Majesty the Queen a tour of the archive and viewed a small exhibition of documents relating to the, quote, establishment of the collection in 1925. Her Majesty was also informed about some of the work being done in connection with the planned celebration of the bicentenary of immigration in 2025, end quote. If you're interested in learning more about Her Majesty's visit to the St. Olaf College, in the description box below, I will leave a direct link to the student newspaper. It's a great article, so you should read it. <laughs> in Washington, D.C., Her Majesty Queen Maxima of the Netherlands, in her capacity as the United Nations Secretary General Special Advocate for Inclusive Finance for Development, participated in the 2022 annual meetings of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the World Bank Group, WBG. On Friday, Her Majesty the Queen gave a keynote speech during the IMF seminar entitled Central Bank Digital Currencies for Financial Inclusion, Risks and Rewards. According to a press release, the CBDC, if appropriately designed, can, quote, help improve financial inclusion. Effective implementation needs a proportionate risk-based approach and the support of complementary policies. The session will share knowledge and lessons learned thus far. End quote. This morning, Her Majesty the Queen gave a speech during the seminar entitled Building Resilience, Accelerating Financial Inclusion Through Digitization. The event aims to highlight the updated Global Findex survey and report for a policy discussion on how digitization is expanding access to financial services and emerging risks. Prior to returning home to Amsterdam this evening, Her Majesty the Queen participated in various bilateral meetings with several government officials from different countries. Discussions focused on opportunities to collaborate on promoting financial inclusion, including, quote, how it can support COVID-19 recovery efforts and help people build resilience to future shocks from the economy and climate events, end quote. In France, Her Royal Highness Grand Duchess Maria Theresa of Luxembourg and famed journalist and overall nice guy, Mr. Stefan Byrne, participated in a book signing event at the bookstore Biarritz. In Ascot, Her Majesty the Queen Consort attended the 2022 QIPCO British Champions Day held at Ascot Racecourse. In Bangkok, their Majesties King Rama X and Queen Sathada of Thailand presided over the inauguration of the Queen Sarakit National Convention Center. The 300,000 square meter convention center consists of eight exhibition halls, two seminar rooms, and 50 conference rooms. In Brunei, His Majesty the Sultan of Brunei, accompanied by his son, His Royal Highness Prince Abdul Mateen of Brunei, began their two-day state visit to Bangladesh. The purpose of the visit is to strengthen bilateral ties between Brunei and Bangladesh. Yesterday afternoon, in Rabat, His Majesty King Mohammed VI of Morocco 
accompanied by his son, His Royal Highness Crown Prince Moulay Hassan bin Mohammed of Morocco, presided over the opening of the first session of the 11th Legislature's second legislative year. In his speech, His Majesty the King warned that Morocco is, quote, now living in a state of structural water stress and is going through a difficult drought stage, the most severe in more than three decades. As a result of the severe drought, a decline in the results of the agricultural sector, which is a mainstay of Morocco's economic growth, end quote. And finally, on this day in royal history, in 2005, his Royal Highness Prince Christian Valdemar Henri John of Denmark was born at the Rijkhuis Hospitalet in Copenhagen. Prince Christian is the eldest son of the Royal Highnesses Crown Prince Frederick and Crown Princess Mary of Denmark, and he is the third grandson of Her Majesty Queen Margrethe II of Denmark and the late Prince Heinrich of Denmark. His maternal grandfather is Professor John Donaldson and the late Henrietta Donaldson. Christened at Christiansborg Slotskirke on a very cold January 21, 2006, Prince Christian's godparents are their Royal Highnesses Crown Prince Håkon and Crown Princess Metemarit of Norway, Her Royal Highness Crown Princess Victoria of Sweden, His Royal Highness Crown Prince Pavlos of Greece, His Royal Highness Prince Joachim of Denmark, Mrs. Jane Stevens, the eldest sister of Crown Princess Mary, Mr. Jeppe Handwerk, and Mr. Hamish Campbell. In March of 2007, Prince Christian began nursery school at the Queen Louise's Kindergarten in Fredensborg. Thereafter, the prince attended public school in Hellerup. In the fall of 2021, Prince Christian was enrolled at the elite boarding school Herlofsham. However, several months after the controversial TV2 documentary entitled Herlofsham's Secrets, aired on Danish television, the prince was removed from the school. Today, the 17-year-old prince and future king of Denmark is in grade 2 at the Ode Rup Gymnasium in Hentofte in North Jutland. So, how is the prince celebrating his special day? Well, according to the Danish royal court, the prince will be spending his birthday privately with family and friends. So with that, happy birthday, Prince Christian. I hope you have a wonderful day. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow on Sunday, October 16th with all the latest royal news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful Saturday evening and a great day tomorrow. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Okay, take care everyone. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.